Oh my god, that was <laughs> so loud. Good. Welcome back to the University of Sikistan and welcome back to episode three. Count them three. Did you three like this? I did three like that, yeah. Is that the way they did it in Glorious Bastards? You know, the, what's That's the, how the Germans did it. To three like this. I do three like this. Like that. There's so many options. You could do it like uh, that as well. <laughs> so the episode three of the Force Velocity Curve. Today we're doing swimming, as you know from the title. So we asked you in the first episode to put your sport below and then ask and then if you wanted that sport upvote it or add comments and swimming came out at like 36 votes and there was like seven or eight replies so people really fucking want swimming uh we guessed like all sports s and c would help every sport uh there i know there are some coaches out there who talk about there might not be any need to do dry land training and they're wrong um from what we've seen so we went and did a bit of research uh it was really enjoyable research it's not often we find something that's kind of uh Something we haven't thought about already, and swimming hasn't been something we've interacted with anyone just yet, but we're always open to helping anyone. And basically what we've found is that swimming are basically rugby players underwater. They have almost the exact same needs. The only differentiating factor is the body weight and the actual levels of strength are vastly different, but the style of training isn't hugely different. Are there no. needs in terms of the force velocity curve? So Fitz, what are those needs? Swimming is a fairly unique sport in the fact that swimming encompasses a large amount of kind of different demands. So all the way through from like, if you look at the Olympic events, 50 meter, 100 meter, 200 meter, 400 meter, 800 meter, 1500 meter swimming events. So there's obviously a huge amount there. It's like the mixture between like a 400 meter runner and a marathon runner, you know, there's a vast array of, of training to be done there. We focused a lot on like, 50 meter, 100 meter, 200 meter, purely because there's a lot of studies on it. Swimming is in a fairly unique position. As Garf said, there's loads of research on it. The interesting point on swimming is that there's so much research on swimming because it's one of the unique sports that kind of makes its own gravy. So a lot of sports will have like the triangle of grassroots, intermediate and high level sport. Most sports draw in their money and their revenue from high level elite sports. So basically rugby players, soccer players, playing professional matches they sell tickets they sell jerseys they sell merchandise and that brings in money to kind of fund grassroots for a lot of it in swimming because every kid needs to learn how to swim and every person learning how to swim or most of them will go to a swimming coach a lot of money comes into grassroots level there's a lot of money in swimming and there's a lot of great research comes out of it so what does that research kind of focus on or what's it look at a lot of the time well, the first piece we looked at is the start, right? So the start, you're on a board, they usually class it as like five to 15 meters. So there's a huge like leg component. There's an explosive start off the board. When you're underwater, you tend to have the hands tucked out in front, your legs propulsing you as aggressively as possible. And when we look at the research and like where that kind of training falls on the force velocity curve, it's a lot of plyometric work. So there's some differing values on whether plyometrics helps swimming in, in the kind of total race, or if you look at like a 200 meter race, is plyometric uh, work or is leg power significant in, in predicting overall performance? Well, in the start, it certainly is. And in the turnaround, it certainly is. So when you look at that, that would be kind of strength speed work or it would be power work. Uh, they recommend plyometric training. The next piece on from that then is looking at squatting and bench pressing the two kind of classic maximal strength pieces and trying to see does max strength so all the way up at the top very low velocity very high force levels the top of the curve um or in the first video we called the bottom of the curve but we won't get into that and there's studies out there showing that around 40 45 percent to 62 percent of swim performance and this was a 50 meters freestyle swim done with fairly good athletes so like intermediate national competitive level athletes was predictive with max strength level training so one of the most interesting things about maximum strength training or heavy strength training or high force production if we're sticking with the high the force velocity curve video is that high force training has the potential to make you faster but it also has the potential to make you slower as well so it's a very nuanced complex interplay between high force training and explosive sports it's certainly needed it certainly can help if used in the right way but if used in the wrong way it can almost certainly have a negative impact on your high velocity movements we won't get into that just today we'll leave that for another video another sport but no first for swimming being strong and explosive was very very important 
One of the more interesting things, for example, we had a study, it was the relationship between dry land strength and swimming performance, pull-up mechanics as predictor of swimming speed. So they basically did uh, pull-up speed and then pull-ups to failure. And one of the things they found, which was quite interesting, in kind of contrast to what we do see some swimmers we used to say the university went to had some quite high level swimmers and what we typically see people doing in the gym with their swim training is they'll do endurance style strength training so they will do stuff like high reps they'll do like three sets of 20 four sets of 20 on the back squat they'll do you know any number of high endurance strength training which is completely the opposite of what all the studies are suggesting it's what you we would have thought prior to even researching this and one of the things they found was in the pull-ups to failure, it is not how many pull-ups the swimmers could do, it was how fast they stayed until they hit failure. So the person who could do 25 pull-ups but got very, very slow, say towards like pull-up 15, and those extra 10 pull-ups seemed to have had no impact on the swimming, so that kind of endurance, muscular endurance, whereas the swimmers we saw who were doing less pull-ups but could stay as fast as possible until their pull-ups to failure, so high power, producing swimmers had a better predictor of swimming performance so again so we're looking at fast twitch fibers really explosive athletes so swimmers like we're saying are rugby players underwater by the looks of this the other interesting thing about swimming as a sport is the the kind of dominance of upper body musculature in swimming uh the the classic shape of a swimmer if you were look at ideal swimming morphology is you would have a very very long torso like like a canoe or like the hull of a boat, you would then have short upper arms, so the humerus would be shorter than the ulna or the radius. You would have long, long forearms and hands, so it's like a very, very big paddling surface or kind of force-inducing surface as it goes through the water. Then you want the leg to be as short as possible and the feet to be as long as possible, right? 80 to 90%, and I'm saying 80 to 90% because a lot of papers differ in their values for this, 80 to 90 percent of propulsion in swimming comes from the upper body and as garf said like a lot of the kind of training we see people do is the pull-ups the lat pull downs all of these things but a lot of papers rightly so start looking at the importance of the lower body musculature and why that is so vital to not only the the propulsion at the start like your start position that initial jump and drive and the propulsion underwater but also in the ability to maintain a good posture in the water. So a lot of the time we look at swimmers and they're doing all the very, very powerful pulling down movements. They're up in that kind of upper two thirds quadrant of the force velocity curve. There is an important part in swimming that goes into the maximal strength or kind of isometric area of maintaining very, very good posture in the water. So although we're not using the legs and we just want those, those legs to be like little flippers on a seal, we do need to make sure that the legs aren't dropping down and kind of increasing that surface area on the water. So if my arm and hand were the swimmer going through the water, the second my feet or my legs or even my lower kind of torso starts to drop down, this surface area is drastically increased. And so keeping the legs up high in the water by having a good level of, of kind of lower body musculature, posterior musculature like your erectors and your glutes will allow the swimmer to stay more upright and more streamlined in the water so if we can conclude anything from this as we've always said strength training is just good for every single sport there isn't a sport that can't benefit from productive strength training which is obviously why you're here watching us so one of the things you might say for example what if i'm doing 1500 meter freestyle surely do i need a different kind of training it's more of an endurance event and it's it's certainly grueling by the looks of swimming and the amount of volume they do in their actual pool training but they, you might make an argument to say that uh, you know it's, it's more of an endurance event. You will still need just as much ability to produce power as fast as possible given the number of high repetition kickoffs when you're turning from the wall. There's also probably an argument to make that you need a better quality of power production because you have more repetitions of that. So you need to maintain better quality under fatigue and the better you are, the less you will degrade or the less you will kind of decay over the course of a swim if you have better quality power production. So if you're a swimmer, don't go to the gym and start doing endurance style training or muscular endurance style stuff. You need to be strong. Well, when I use strong, some of their numbers are pretty abysmal. We're talking like 100 kilo, not terrible even like numbers. terrible numbers, 100 kilo back squat kind of things, like 80 kilo bench presses for elite level swimmers and some of these. So you can be a little bit stronger than that. And we do have programs. We've pressing programs, we've squatting programs, we've pulling programs. We've, we can help you for sure with that if you, if you need help with it. But 
being strong and explosive is something that's very very important for swimming without a shadow of a doubt uh, finally there is then a in your training swimmers are very prone to shoulder injuries they have a huge amount of issues likely this will come down to anatomical shoulder builds it, it just number of repetitions would probably be hard to strength condition away if you're not built for swimming so it's something you probably can't help with but there is a lot of nuance and there's a lot of smart things you can do with your shoulders in terms of uh, your kind of more force production style training or higher force stuff which would be like you know higher repetition stuff more isolation work so all of that is very very important but maybe not so relevant to the video so thanks for watching and uh, what sport we'll do next um i can't remember what was the second most upvoted on the first video but if you have a sport and you really want to see it done just get more upvotes in the second most upvoted sport that was on the first video and leave it below in the comments so we see a lot of them what do you want to do next i'll check the list yeah see which sports most upvoted okay gotcha. if you want the next video to be a different sport than that make sure you comment the living daylight i feel like um i want to say basketball a second basketball was second basketball i'm looking forward to doing canoe polo fencing canoe polo is vicious yeah if you haven't watched canoe polo yeah we should put a clip of it in here. It is a dangerous sport. I'm looking forward to fencing because that would do great from strength training and for reasons yeah. people mightn't think about. And We're currently involved with a, a national stroke international level fencer in oh, his yeah. SNC training. And then uh, decathlon because I want to talk about how much gear is important to that sport. And then, um, oh, also, obviously, you know, it, it didn't, we didn't bring it up, but obviously swimming, you know, all these qualities respond incredibly well to gear. So, you know... <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching. If you don't want basketball to be done, get your own sport in there.